Hi everyone, let's talk about cyclic quadrilaterals. By cyclic quadrilaterals, I mean something like the following. Let's say we have a circle and we pick four points on it. One, two, three, and four. And then we connect consecutive vertices to get a quadrilateral. Then the resulting quadrilateral, let's say we call it a, B, C, D is something we call a cyclic quadrilateral. So a cyclic quadrilateral is a quadrilateral that has all four vertices on a circle. And we're going to be discussing two other equivalent formulations of cyclic quadrilaterals. This is the first one. The second one is that angle ADB is equal to angle ACB in a convex quadrilateral. So we're, we're assuming that it's convex. And the third criterion is that angle A BC is equal to angle ADC. Sorry, it's equal. It's angle ABC plus angle ADC is equal to 180 degrees. And once again, we're assuming convexity. So we're going to be proving that one if and only if two, and then we're going to be proving one if and only if three. Before we do that, I just want to mention the inscribed angle theorem because it's going to be very useful to us. The inscribed angle theorem says that if we have a circle and we have an inscribed angle like this, then we take the measure of the arc down here. Let's say it's A, B, and C. Then angle ACB is equal to the arc AB, the measure of the arc AB divided by 2. And if you don't know what that means, we just draw the central angle. And it's, it's this angle here that is the measure of the arc. And so that is twice the measure of ACB. But the converse holds, holds as well. The converse of the inscribed angle theorem says that if angle ACB is equal to AB, arc AB over 2, so let's say we've got a circle like this, and we've got some point out here, B. and we draw the central angle here which is AB arc AB then if this relationship holds then B actually doesn't lie out there or inside the circle but on the circle so it establishes that a point actually lies on the circle and we're going to be using both the inscribed angle theorem and its converse So let's prove that 1 implies 2. This is pretty immediate. Um, so we're assuming, assume cyclicity. And we have a quadrilateral that looks like this, A, B, C, D. And what we'll do is that we'll draw these two angles. And by the inscribed angle theorem, what we have is that angle ADC, ADB 
is equal to angle ACB. So that's what we wanted to prove. ADB is equal to ACB. Now let's go in the other direction. Let's go from 2 to 1. So suppose angle ADB is equal to angle ACB. We're going to draw a diagram as usual. It's always helpful to do that. What we're going to do is that we're going to start with ADB. ADB. And the circle is the circumcircle of, let's say, gamma is circum circle of triangle ADB. And we're also going to draw C, which is somewhere out here. And our, the, the goal is to prove that C lies on gamma, the circumcircle. What we know is that angle ACB is equal to angle ADB by assumption over here and that equals the arc we have this arc AB so we have the arc AB over 2 and since since uh, C is subtended by the same arc over here C is subtended by this arc we find that uh, C in fact lies on the circle. So this is uh, C is a point on gamma by the and we're using the converse of the inscribed angle theorem here. Now now we're gonna head over to the third criterion. We want to prove that one implies three. And remember, this has to do with opposite interior angles. So suppose, suppose cyclicity and what we want to prove is that ABC plus ADC is equal to 180 degrees. So let's draw a diagram as always. We have A B, C, D. And what we find is that angle A, B, C plus angle A, D, C is equal to, first of all, we have A, B, C is equal to the arc A, D, C, which is over here, the arc A, D, C over 2 by the inscribed angle theorem and a ADC angle ADC is equal to half of the opposite arc so arc ABC over 2 and since these two ADC plus ABC these two arcs not angles but arcs equal to 360 degrees we find that half of that is 180 degrees. So that, that proves the first direction, that 1 implies 3. Now we have to prove the final direction, which is that 3 implies 1. And so we're going to assume that angle ABC plus angle ADC is equal to 180 degrees. And as with 2 implies 1, we're going to use the converse of the inscribed angle theorem. And the way we're going to do that is by drawing the circumcircle of ABC. So this is gamma, which is circumcircle of triangle ABC. And we're going to draw D out here, but really we're going to end up showing that D is lying on the circle gamma. So angle ADC is equal to 
180 degrees minus angle A B C because of the assumption that we have at the beginning. And now because angle ABC is an inscribed angle, what we can do is that we can take this arc that we're going to call AC and say that this is equal to 180 degrees minus arc AC over 2 by the inscribed angle theorem. And that is equal to 180 degrees minus 360 degrees minus ABC, arc ABC, so the opposite arc because that's the opposite is 360 degrees minus that over 2 and that's just equal to arc the measure of arc ABC. So what this shows is that angle ADC is equal to oh there should be a division by 2 here. So what we show is that angle ADC is equal to the arc ABC over here divided by 2 and by the converse of the inscribed angle theorem this proves that D lies on gamma. So that proves the second equivalent condition. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.